Good morning and how are you today? Great to see you. I have a fantastic wine recipe here today. That is fantastic. You are going to love this. This is a rhubarb and apple wine. I've made a few downs of this last year and it is sublime. This rhubarb and apple wine is sweet, it's delicate, it's floral, it's fruity, it's light-hearted, it's funny, it's funky, it's delicious, it's divine. Great for summers. And now, being the spring, when the rhubarb's coming up, is the time to make it. Or also, the other time to make it is in the winter, if you freeze your rhubarb. And then you have your windfall apples. Because it's always better to make wine from frozen rhubarb. Because it releases a lot more juice and a lot more flavour into your wine. But I haven't actually frozen my rhubarb, because I'm just so excited to get this wine going, fermenting, brewing so I can drink it because a day freezing that rhubarb is a day that it's not turning into alcohol and that's what I love. Wine, not alcohol. So what ingredients do we need for this rhubarb and apple wine? You've guessed it, we need rhubarb and we need apples as the main flavouring for the wine. It wouldn't be rhubarb and apple wine without rhubarb and apple, would it now? No, but quantities and proportions. What I have found best for this combo of apple and rhubarb is just over a kilo of rhubarb, so 1.2 kilograms worth. That gives the wine enough rhubarb flavour without overpowering your apples, because you want to balance the flavour of both the apple and the rhubarb. For the apples, I'm using half a dozen Gala apples. I've tried it with Critton apples and they work really well. But if you want to use Critton apples, reduce the number down to four because the acidity and the sharpness doesn't really work that well with the tartness of the rhubarb. So you want more of a sweeter apple. But if you do want to use Critton apples, because that's what your tree gives you, use four of them. The first thing you want to do is chop your fresh rhubarb. If you want to then put it in the freezer and freeze it overnight, do so, and then proceed with the recipe using frozen rhubarb. But as I stated before, I'm using fresh because I'm impatient and I want to do it today whilst the sun's shining and it's not raining or windy. So chop your rhubarb. You could add more rhubarb to the mix if you wanted to. It would just add a fuller, robuster flavour. But I find with the apple, it doesn't really need to be dense with the rhubarb flavour. You want it to be sweet on the tongue, you want it to be light, refreshing, tasty. So that is why I'm not overdoing the rhubarb. The full written recipe for this rhubarb and apple wine is written up in my website and the link to that is down below. There are also many other wine recipes I have put up there. So go and explore them, go and have a look and see which wine recipes you fancy making next because there are loads and loads and loads. With your rhubarb finely chopped and maybe frozen if you chose to freeze it, you want to put it into a big fermentation vessel. In other words, a big, clean, sterilised bucket. And then proceed to chop and slice, dice your six apples, or four critters if you're using cooking apples. The smaller you chop your pieces of apple, the bigger the surface area they have, Therefore, the more juice they give off and more flavour into your wine. So nice small little chunks if you can. Then once you've chopped your apple, straight into your fermenter. With my wine recipes, I always try and work out when it's best to make them and also when it's best to drink them. Now this rhubarb and apple wine is a light summerish drink. It's not a very heavy rhubarb wine. I've made some rhubarb wines which are brilliant for winter. They are reminiscent of summer. They are refreshing, yet they have this depth that are best enjoyed around the fire on a cold, dark night. But this rhubarb and apple wine is light, it's refreshing, it's thirst quenching. It's not too heavy on the taste buds, nor alcohol wise. Therefore, it is a great summer's drink. So if you make it now, when your rhubarb is growing, it will be awesome come the spring or next summer. With all of your rhubarb and apples added to your fermentation bucket, you want to chop an orange in half and squeeze in the juice and add the flesh to your bucket as well. The orange juice does add a great amount of citric acid, which is very important to help the yeast get to work with the sugar. It's one of the elements that the yeast love. They like a slightly acidic environment to 
get going. Also, I'm using orange instead of lemon juice because I think that tartness of the rhubarb mixed with the lemon is a bit too acidic tart on the taste buds. But the orange doesn't quite have that bite to it. That's why I personally prefer orange in rhubarb wine. But if you're a fan of that tartness, then go for cooking apples and go for lemon. It tindles on the tongue, it's refreshing, lovely stuff. So that's your main lots of flavouring ingredients. And now we need to add the special thing that the yeast is going to love, the sugar. I have tried with brown sugar, but I find that the rhubarb gets lost in the molasses depth of the brown sugar. So I'm using 1.25 kilograms of granulated white sugar. And this wine will end up being about 14.5 to 15%. Great table wine, great summer drinking, sipping in the garden wine. Not too heavy, not too strong. It's not going to get you pissed off the first glass whilst you cut them in the grass. So pour in your 1.25 kilograms of your sugar. And the next stage is to give your bucket a really good shake. Get that sugar coating all of the rhubarb and all of the apple. Shake it away, give it a good mix, good stir in that spoon. And we're not going to add any liquid to that, surprisingly. No water, we're just going to let the sugar extract and draw out all the juice from the rhubarb. Your apples will turn a bit brown, but that is fine. There is some citric acid in your bucket. That's going to preserve it, not do any harm. It's not going to go mouldy overnight, but you just want to leave it. 12 hours, 24 hours. So put on a lid. Keep it in a warm place overnight until the following day. And then I'll be right back with you in a jiffy now. Welcome back. 24 hours have passed and my rhubarb and apple wine has been stood in that sugar and orange juice solution. The rhubarb has leaked out a load of juice and it's looking fantastic. The sugar is still very syrupy, so we need to do the next stage right here, right now. And the next stage could not be easier. And the thing we need to do now is pour over two litres of near boiling water to dilute that sugar syrup solution even more. So come on, let's pour this kettle load over the bucket. And that blast of near boiling water isn't just going to dilute that sugar syrup solution. It's going to help extract some more of the apple flavour and more of the rhubarb juice. So we're going to put a lid on it now and give it a good shake or a stir. I prefer to shake it. And there's this delightful aroma coming off your bucket. It's the tartness of the rhubarb and the sweet apple floral scent coming off and just tickling the nose buds. Fantastic. And now we need to pour over two and a half litres of cold water to the bucket to bring it up to the one gallon mark. Of course, if you want to make a five gallon batch of this wine, because you have a lot of apples and rhubarb, go for it. Just multiply the ingredients by five and you'll have a lot more wine. Good stuff. And with that being a suitable temperature, i.e. lukewarm, you want to be adding your yeast. I'm using Cross My Loose Rhubarb Wine Yeast. It really helps with the rhubarbness. By the way, they don't sponsor me or the channel. It's not commercially endorsed or anything like that. It's just what I personally prefer to use. But you can use any yeast that you fancy. You can use a general purpose wine yeast or a specific type if you fancy. But I find the rhubarb wine yeast is fantastic at bringing out that rhubarb flavour. So, sprinkle in your wine yeast on top of the must, and that is looking fantastic now. It's now ready to be set aside in a warm place with a lid on your bucket and to let the yeast get to work at starting to digest and ferment those sugars and turn it into alcohol and turn it into wine. I'm going to leave mine for five or seven days before I come back and we strain off the liquid into a clean demijohn. So I'm going to disappear for a week and I'll see you in a second now. Good morning and welcome back. A week has passed since I started my rhubarb and apple wine. It is looking divine in the bucket. So good that after I filmed the initial one gallon batch, I doubled the quantity. Because that's the great thing about these recipes. If you want to double it or quadruple it or times it by five, you can so easily. 
So now I have two gallons of rhubarb and apple wine in my fermenter. It's looking awesome. Come and see. It's been bubbling away for a full week and it is fantastic. So now we need to grab your siphon tube and a clean, sanitised, sterilised demijohn and siphon it into your demijohn. Good stuff. And whilst that is siphoning and filling up the demijohn, someone made a point on one of my videos recently about why I don't use an auto siphon. Well, I have tried. I just can't get to grips with them because the flow rate is far too strong for my liking. It just gushes out and before you know it, the demijohn is overflowing. I prefer the old fashioned way. And as for the hygiene thing about putting it in your job and then sucking on it, don't worry, I always have a big load of vodka before I begin. And there we have it. One gallon of beautiful, delicious rhubarb and apple wine. Now this would carry on fermenting for about another three to four weeks, depending on the temperature you store it in and atmospheric pressure and your altitude and a whole heap of different factors. It's very hard to put a time scale on fermentation. The wine will be done when the wine is done. You can't rush these things and you can't put a number on it. But what you can do is put in an airlock into your demijohn and set it aside in a warm place. Then once it's finished fermenting, you want to rack off all the liquid from any sediment it has thrown and set it aside to clear for another, well, until it becomes clear, which won't take that long with the rhubarb and apple wine. And if you want to see another rhubarb wine, why don't you check out this video up by here? And I'll see you all really soon. You have fun now.